Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm basically going to be explaining the logic statements in Kotlin. And these are basically very universal when it comes to any other programming languages. So let's get started. So I'm going to create a new Kotlin class and I'm going to call it logical statements. Or let's just call it logic statements. All right, logic statements. And let's create that. And let's get rid of this comment right here. Let's create the main function args array. And let's call that a string and uh, let's open this as a function now for those of you who have done mathematics and physics you may already have an idea of what the logic statements are and they're exactly what you think they are we have the and all right you have your and you have your or and you have your not all right and these basically have their own uh, they're basically integrated in kotlin very very easily and it's very very universal as to how these work uh even with other program programming languages. So your and uh, basically your and statement, how it would look like in Kotlin is basically two uh, and signs. All right. That's basically your and uh, when talking about or it's uh, the key where your backslash lies. Uh, if you use the shift key and that you get the combination of these two little lines right here. These are your or this is your or statement, two little lines. And for your not statement, that is just an exclamation mark. So pretty simple, but now you might be asking yourself, how do I integrate these? Well, uh, I can show you this using maybe a simple program. So let's create a variable. Let's create a variable A is equal to 10. Let's create a variable B. So oops, I thought I was in Java there. Variable B is equal to 20. Uh, is equal to, oops, sorry about that, is equal to 20. And now let's use a statement, all right? And the if statement will basically uh, it'll basically revolve around the value of a and b uh, basically relating to each other. So let's use the if statement. So if if a uh, is greater than is greater than uh, or equal to b, all right. And we're going to use the and statement. Or let me explain first of all what's going on. So. Um, you basically go down and you put in the whatever you want to run when uh, using this statement. So let's say print if a is greater than b, which it isn't right now. We say a a is greater than b, but it's not. So let's actually change these values. Let's invert these. Let's make this. Uh, let's keep that at 20 and let's keep this at 50. All right. So when I'm keeping this at 50. Uh, we are basically comparing these two. So if A is greater than or equal to B, print A is greater than B. All right. So uh, it, we all ov obviously know that this is going to be the case. So if we run this, it's going to print A is greater than B. So let's let's run this and let's see what it gives us. It's indeed going to give us A is greater than B. Now we can say in addition to a being greater is in addition to running the condition a if a is greater than or equal to b we want to also run and a to make sure so these are running in conjunction with each other so if a is, is greater than or equal to b and a is let's say uh less than a hundred or let's say a is greater than or equal to 40 you can basically say and then you say a is print a is greater than b and a is greater than 40 all right so you can basically run by that now this will basically work so if we say this so let's say let's run this all right and it's going to say a is greater than b and a is greater than 40 but what if we change this to let's say 10 back to what its original value it's not going to return anything because we haven't given it an else statement but these are this is basically how uh, the the logic statements would work so now if you were to use the uh, the or statement so now it's going to run through uh, any of these two so it's going to test the first one if is a greater than or equal to b uh, no or is a greater than or equal to 40 no and it'll probably print the same thing right here so now i'm going to run an interesting test right now so we've run and it's not going to print out anything so if we changed b to 40 and we changed the uh, actually we change this to 50 and we change this to 40 we know that a is not going to be greater than b because a is 40 and b is 50 but or a is greater than or equal to 40 which it is so hopefully it should return it should return uh, this line right here it doesn't make a lot of sense 
but if it returns that we know that it worked so indeed it's going to say that now when talking and uh, when talking about a uh, not that's very very simple you basically um using for uh, for things like if a is greater than or equal to b or if a is uh, is not equal to b you basically get the idea it's very very simple to use and that's basically how you integrate these two with each other so i can just get rid of these two and uh, just leave it like that so those are the basic uh, logical statements that are there in kotlin and are also available in other programming languages but that's basically it for this video if you guys have any questions just let me know in the q and a section of the course Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm basically going to be explaining what conditional operators are and how they work. So in this section of the course we're going to be going through all the conditional operators or as they are also known as the decision operators where they they are basically used to make decision and function under certain conditions. So, uh, let's create our class and let's get started. So I'm going to create a new Kotlin class and I'm going to call it a uh, conditional operators let's call it let's call it conditional operators all right and let's open that let's get rid of this let's create the the main function arguments array oops forgot about the y string open that as a function now when we are talking about conditional operators we basically have uh, three or four of them but the first one that i think for those of you who are already familiar with programming, we'll already know this. The first one is if, the if statement, all right? The if statement is, uh, as it says, is basically, it's a conditional operator. So by default, it means if, what if, that's basically what it's trying to imply. So uh, let me explain this with a simple, very, very simple program. Let's say um, we say var, let's create a variable a is equals to 20, right? And let's create an if statement saying, if we open the brackets all right now in here you put the conditions required for this if statement so if a is greater than all right so those are these are relational operators all right so basically you have your relational operator here greater than greater than or equal to 10 which it is already because it's 20 then that means that we uh, we then open two curly braces all right we open two curly braces this is where we enter the what to what to do once this condition is is met so if if a is greater than or equal to 10 which it is print out so we're going to say print uh, a we can basically say a a is a is greater than or we can just say a a is greater than 10 greater than or equal to 10 that's basically that you know that's very very simple and if we run this we'll basically get that so let's actually run that so it's going to tell us a is greater than or equal to this is a bit basic uh, in terms of a program let's actually create something a bit um, a bit complete complex uh, when compared to this one so we're going to basically create a program that will ask the user to input a number and then we are going to test it if it's larger than 10 and to see whether it really works. So let's say uh, print, let's prompt uh, the, the user to say, uh, please enter a number. All right. And we're just going to prompt it and we're going to say variable. Uh, let's say variable number is supposed to be in an integer format we know that and is equals to read line right and that's uh, you basically get the idea now uh, when we're, we're, we're going to be basically using uh, we have to convert this to an integer by the way so this is a two int if I'm not mistaken actually I don't know why it's actually it's not giving me the completion so this is two two int that's supposed to be two int right and uh, we're using that actually that's supposed to come before that so there we are so we have converted this to an integer so now it's going to be stored as an integer in the variable n so now we have to run the if statement so if n is uh, greater than or equals to let's say 10 all right and then we open the curly braces and we say if n is greater than or equal to 10 what do we do we say print 
we're going to use the concatenation. We're going to say n, which is your number, plus concatenation. Your number is greater than 10. All right? Greater than 10. So it's very, very simple. So that's basically what we're going to be using. Or, or you could just say your number is greater than 10. Is greater than 10. All right. So let's save that and let's see what we get. See what we get. And it's going to say, please enter a number. So I'm going to enter 30. And it's going to say your number is greater than 10. But now you might be asking, how do we know if this is working? What if we enter a number like 5 or something? So let's enter 5 for an example. And it's not going to run anything. All right. So in the next video, we're actually going to get started with the other conditional statements like the if else and uh, so many others. So that's basically it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the Q&A section of the course. Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In today's video, we're actually going to get started with the if else statement. So in the previous video, we looked at the if statement and how it can be used. As you can see here in this, uh, when, when we're looking at one, uh, at that the if statement. So uh, let's actually look at the if else statement. So let's get rid of this code. And to do this, I'm basically, we're going to, we're going to create a very, very cool program that will show you how this will work. So this program is going to ask you for, it's going to ask the user for for the for their age and then it's going to basically compare it and see whether or not you are the legal age to drink to drink alcohol so uh let's actually get started um what the first thing we have to do again is we, we have to prompt the user so let's say uh please enter your age all right and they're going to enter their age and then we're basically going to get a variable we're going to variable age which is an integer uh, in, in terms of default uh, data type which is going to be read line we're going to read that and then to int all right so we're going to convert it to an integer and store it in the variable age now we're going to use the if statement again so we're going to say if age is greater or equal to 21 years old that means you are your legal you're in the legal age to drink alcohol so what we would say is print line you can drink you can drink al you can drink alcohol you can drink alcohol right now where the else statement comes in the if else uh, combination of these two comes in so basically you've you've told the computer or the uh, the kotlin programming language all right so if age was what we enter here if it is greater than or equal to 21 print this but what if it's not greater than or equal to 21? What if you're 12? What if you're 10 years old? That's when you use the else statement, all right? The else statement is very, very simple. You just use the else statement and you come down and use the two curly braces, all right? And then you can basically print whatever you want to be printed if the age is not uh, greater than or equal to 21. So if it's not, if it's not print, uh, greater than or equal to 21, we basically use the, we say, print um we basically say sorry we basically say you are not allowed to drink right and uh, that will basically display that so now if we if we run this program so let's run this program and let's see what it gives us let's enter our age so it's going to say please enter your age and i can say 19 all right and it's going to say you are not allowed to drink pretty awesome let's try that again now with uh and let's uh, let's write an age an age like 30 and it's going to say you can drink alcohol right so pretty cool now in addition to this you can have some you can have some uh, you can have some more fun but we'll get to that in the next video so uh, this is basically the if else statement as i said you're testing where we basically to summarize what we've done we've asked the user to enter their age all right we are basically uh, allowing the user to enter their age and we are storing their age in the age variable in an integer the data type all right we then go into the if statement and we say if the age entered or the age stored in the age variable is greater than or equal to 21 you basically print you can drink alcohol if it's not you say else 
print line you are not allowed to drink simple program that basically explains the if and the if else statement all in one so thank you so much for watching this video if you have any questions just let me know in the q a section of the course hello everyone welcome to this video in this video we're basically going to be looking at the else if statement which is very similar to the if else statement but it has a, it has a, some advantages over that so uh, again to explain this i'm going to be creating now a program that will ask the user for their grade their grade in for example uh, for example the result in a test or uh, their grade in whatever they in a test uh, you can also use that as well and then we're going to basically compare it and give them uh, a rating on their grade. So if they if they got a certain amount of marks, they would get this grade. And if they got a certain amount, amount of marks, they would get that grade. So the first thing we're going to do again is we're going to prompt the user. Print. Uh, we're going to say print. Um, please enter your grade. All right. And they're going to enter their grade. Again, now we have to create a variable. So variable, variable grade. Um, which is, I think, let's use a double um, in terms of uh, data type, and we're going to say uh, this is basically read read line uh, dot two two double. All right, so we've converted it to a double. Uh, now, uh, basically, they're going to enter the grid, and uh, we can start by saying, let's start by using a simple if statement, and we say if we know that we cannot grade a gra uh, we cannot give a, a grade to marks anything below zero so let's start with that so you say if grade is less than zero is less than or equal to zero all right if grade is less than or equal to zero we basically say uh, print and we say um, please please enter valid marks all right but now you might have realized something all right the person who wrote this mark might have actually got zero and zero is a valid uh, mark so what we're going to use now here is we're going to say if grade is less than or equal to zero is less than is less than zero all right then we're, we're going to say please enter a valid uh, please enter valid mark so anything in the negative will basically uh, prompt this to open up all right and then we can say we can also add something here with the logic operator so we're going to say and which is a double uh, and sign and we're going to say and grade is greater than 100 all right so we know anything that's greater than uh, less than zero and greater than 100 cannot be valid marks so then we're going to say else if all right that's where you integrate the else if statement this is where it makes a lot of sense because you're, you're going to give it another set of conditions so else if grade uh, let's start off with the 90s so let's say if grade is greater than or equal to 90 and uh, let's say greater than or equal to 90 so that means yeah if grade is greater than or equal to 90 we can say print uh, let's say you got an A. All right. That's a good statement. So if someone got 90 greater than uh, anything greater than or equal to 90, they got an A. And we've already given the statement saying that if it's larger than 100, it's not counted as valid marks. All right. But then you might be asking yourself, what if someone got 100? Not great, not more than 100, but he got a perfect score. Well, for this, we're going to use the or. All right. So you guys, are, I'm pretty sure you guys are already familiar with this. These are the logic operators. So, so we're going to use the OR operator. And when you say OR, grade, uh, we can basically say um, grade is, actually, we don't need to enter that here. So if person enter grade is greater than or equal to 90, then we can say else if we can create another one. And we can say grade is, um, we can say um, equal to, 100 all right so if they entered a grade that was equal to 100 if they entered a grade that was a, you can say grade less than or equal to 100 then we can say that they got you can say print you got a perfect score and you can go on and on until the person even got something less so let, now, now now let's enter the last one else um, we can use the else statement or you can say grade is less than or equal to 40 we say if you got anything less than or equal to 40 
uh, we ba you basically failed, right? So we can say sorry, we forgot to add the if here. You can say print. Sorry, my typing is really, really bad because I'm talking to the microphone. So basically you failed. So now if we enter this and uh, let, we're going to run through three types of grades and let's see what it returns. So um, let's run this program and it's going to say, please enter your grade. Let's say I got 80. We didn't give a condition for that. So it's going to say we got a perfect score. Again, this is what I was saying. If, it's, if it says you got a perfect score, that means you have made something. So this is less than or equal to 90. And we have to include something. And uh, grade is greater than or equal to uh, 90. Just to make sure that it stays in that range. All right. So let's try and run this now again. All right, so now let's write if we entered 80, it's not going to give us anything because we don't, we didn't give a condition for 80. But now let's try and run anything over, let's say 92. Let's say someone got 92 in the test. It's going to say you got an A. Perfect. It's working. Let's, uh, let's try and see if someone got, uh, if someone enters 100, uh, let's say that someone entered uh, 101. Uh, oh, we got an error over there. So, okay, so if uh, grade is less than or equal to grade is greater than, a hundred please enter valid marks all right so less than or equal to all right so so we that's just a small mistake now if we were to run this program again and say someone got less than let's say someone got 30 which is less than 40 they failed the test uh, so that's basically it right for this video so you now understand the if and the else if statement and the else if statement we have learned the if the else and the else if statement so now you guys should be pretty comfortable with these conditional statements. And that's basically it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, just let me know in the Q&A section of the course. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video. So we are getting basically getting done with the if statements. And we have one more uh, basic if statement um, to look at. And we have the nested if statement. Now, what is a nested if statement? Well, a nested if statement, as the name suggests, is an if statement nested within a current if statement so let's just look at how we can basically implement that so let's create a new class new kotlin class and call this uh, nest nested if all right let's call it a nested if all right and uh, let's get rid of this comment all right now um, function main let's create the, the main function uh, function uh, main array uh, And let's open that function. So, as I said, it's basically an if statement within, uh, and nested within an, a current if statement. So let's let, let's do this by creating creating a simple program. So let's say I had a variable, uh, variable a. Let's just keep things simple, or, or let's actually change it up. So variable x is equals to ten, right? And you have variable y. Uh, whoops, excuse me. Variable y is equals to twenty, right? And we were to create a simple if statement saying if uh, if y is uh, greater than or equal to x, I basically whoops, let me just bring that together. Uh, I just want to basically say um, we have two. Let me just clear that up. All right. So basically, uh, if y is greater than or equal to x, which it is, we want to print um, uh, y is than x but now in this if statement right here we can basically create another if statement correlating with the current if statement so we are to say uh, so we can basically say then if if uh, y is greater than or equal to 10 you can then also say for example uh, print you can also say print and say y is greater than is greater than 10 right you can also in incorporate the else because you've already incorporated the if you can basically say else and let's say if y is not greater than 10 which we know it is then just say print you can just say y y which i'll, ex I'll explain how this is working y is not greater than x uh, sorry gr not greater than 10 all right so 
let me explain what's happening here now. So we created the main function. We declared two variables, x and y, each with their own unique values. We then went to the first if statement saying, if y is greater than or equal to x, it's already greater than x since this is 20 and that's 10. So it's going to print y is greater than x. We already know that. But then we have said in that if statement, we have added another nested if statement saying, if y is greater than 10, which it is, print y is greater than 10. Otherwise or else, print y is not greater than 10. So pretty simple. And I think we, we already know the expected results. But let's just run it to make sure that uh, we, are, we are right on track. All right, it's going to start uh, compiling the code. This takes quite a while um, when you uh, basically start uh, IntelliJ fresh, uh, when you just start the program. So basically, it's going to say y is greater than x and y is greater than 10, because it, bo both of those statements are true. Uh, let's just make this a print line. I should have remembered that. Let's make this a print line and a print line. All right. So um, now let's just experiment with how this to show that this actually works. So in this in this second if statement, the nested if statement, we said if y is greater than or equal to 10. Remember, we can basically change the value of x now. And we can basically say x is, uh, let's say 12, right? And we can say uh, y is 10. All right. And uh, we can, okay, we can basically move this to say uh, x is 8 to just to make sure that y is greater than the, that y is greater than x. So we know that the first statement is going to bring print out y is greater than x because 10 is greater than 8. In the second one is going to say y is greater than or equal to 10. So let's actually just reduce that to a nine, just to, to make sure that it runs this statement here. So it's going to check is y greater than or equal to 10? No, it's nine. So it's going to, it's going to print y is not greater than 10. So let's try and run this and let's see whether it returns uh, that set of uh, uh, results. And there we are. It's going to say y is greater than x. Indeed it is. And then we have y is not greater than 10. So that's basically if uh, nested if statements in a nutshell. And that's all you needed to know about nested if statements. It works the same way with else, the if else and the else if or just basically means an if within an if statement. So that's basically it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, just let me know in the Q&A section of the course. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm basically going to be explaining the when statement in Kotlin. So uh, I'm going to explain basically what the when uh, statement is. It, is, it f conforms under a conditional, uh, a conditional statement. So basically, let's just get started. So I'm going to create a new, st uh, a new class, new Kotlin class, and we're going to call it the the when uh, statement. All right. So it works very, very similar to how the if statement works, but it has a, a very, very different syntax altogether. So let's create the the function, function main args uh yeah sorry array string and we create this the main function now again i'm going to try and explain this using the use of a uh, test or an example program just to make sure that you guys understand it very very simply so um let's actually create a program uh this is going to be quite an advanced program so we're going to create a program that will uh check the grade all right so check check the marks and grade all right check the marks and give a grade all right so i'm just going to add that i'm just going to add that so we know what the program is doing that's a comment so what we're going to do first thing is we're going to prompt the user so we're going to say print uh print line let's use print line and let's say print line um uh, please whoops uh excuse me enter my typing is really bad your marks all right please please enter your marks and uh, the user then is going to enter his marks then we need a variable so variable marks um let's use it as a double data type marks double is equal to read uh read line all right uh, we're using the read line uh we're basically going to using dot uh two double right we're using the dot 
two doubles. So we're converting uh, the string, uh, the, the read line from the string format into the double format and storing it in, it in the variable marks. Now, when talking about the when statement, when, as I said, is basically a conditional statement. So it's very, very similar to how you would find uh, the if statement works. So what you have to do is you basically, uh, you basically type in when, all right? And it pretty self-explanatory, basically saying when you then open brackets and say and give the variable name. So we're using marks. That's the well, what the, the, the condition is we're checking. We're then going to create two curly braces, sorry, and we're going to open that. So pretty simil uh, similar to the if statement. So we've opened the, uh, the, the when and we've written, we're using the variable marks. Now inside these curly braces, you now want to give conditions. Now, let me, before I go that uh, into that, you guys will find this, the, the people who have learned uh, other programming languages like Java, C++, and other object-oriented programming languages will already know this. This is very, very similar to how the switch statement uh, is, but it, uh, it has a slightly different syntax. Of course, you could have already realized that because we're using when instead of switch. But for those of you who are not um, familiar with that, don't worry. We are, I'm basically going to explain how it all works. So now you have options or you have your cases. They are usually called options or cases. All right. So uh, so we're going to say one and we're going to use this this syntax right here. All right. Now, this means option one. So using the hyphen with the greater than sign, which basically makes it look like an arrow. You then are going to say print. But before you do that, you want to open curly braces and say print. Uh, you basically now want to give your syntax and you can say print. Uh, let's say if the person entered the first marks, you can say uh, the value of one. This is basically the value. So you can say now these are the cases. So you can say uh, if the person got 90, right? And we can say print uh, over here. We can say mm, you uh, got an A, all right? And once they've entered that, you basically can go to the next one. So if we say 100... Uh, if we said that and we said open this, uh, open and we say print, you got a perfect score. All right. So if it said that, let me just clear that notification. It's basically going to just display that uh, as it is right now. When talking about, uh, we, we'll, we basically have to just convert this, first of all, into an integer just for the sake of this uh, tutorial. So let's just uh, change this back into an integer just so that the mark, uh, the, the mark values actually work. Sorry about that. Uh, so basically, uh, we have opened this when uh, conditional statement and we're using the variable marks. That's what we're checking. So we're saying when marks are 90, print this. When marks are 100, print this. So you can already see that it's much more convenient to use than an if statement. You can basically go from case to case. So let's say, uh, let's say we give a range, let's say we have a range of, um, let's say zero, use two dots to give a range, uh, zero to 40. All right. And you can basically say zero to 40. I want you to use, um, I want you to basically use uh, okay, hold on. Before we go into range, you say zero and uh, forty. You can basically use those. Those are two values. But let's start with with zero. You can basically then say uh, print, and you can open uh, your your bracket and say you you failed something like that. Don't be too rude. Uh, and you can keep on going on and on. And basically, now we have basically created these options here that we can select from. And whatever mark we enter for the options that we've given, it'll basically print out that. So if we run this program, right, let's just run this again. It's going to take some time to compile everything. Sorry about that. Let it just uh, complete running. So it's going to say enter your marks. So to test this, let's try 90. Uh, you got an A. As you can see, you can keep on going. Uh, we can basically keep on going at this. So let's try a zero. We give that a zero. Let's just copy this to save time. All right. So we're going to copy this and uh, we can now give this another different uh, option. We can say 80. 
or 70 let's just try 70 for a b you got a b you got a b and uh, you can keep on doing that but then one other thing now now you might be asking yourself well what if i want to select maybe i want to give a in case something uh, none of the values are listed here i want to also give an exit or an output statement to basically inform that none of the none of whatever you've entered matches the results that we've got so let's say someone enters a string or they enter like in, instead of entering a number they enter a grade itself just something to alert the user so you basically use the else statement you might be asking yourself well how does this fit in here well you basically it's the syntax is slightly different you use this uh, syntax right here else and hyphen and arrow so that makes it looks like an arrow and then you open your curly braces and open that up and again you can basically then say if the value is a string or an integer so let's say if you, if you enters anything over 101 or 102 you can basically then say uh, print print um, let's say enter a oops we're actually getting an error over here uh, let me just check oh yeah all right so let's just get rid of that so basically else you just want to say print something here you can say uh, enter a correct value you don't have to necessarily use a value that's over because it will already recognize once you've given up all the options but that's basically it for this video guys i know you may have been quite confusing especially going from the if statements but let uh, to summarize we basically have created a program that will allow the user prompt the user to enter their marks then allow the user to enter their marks in terms of an integer format uh, yes, and then we basically moved on to using the when conditional statement and we're going to uh, basically uh, use when with the marks uh, variable so when marks are 90 we'll ba basically print you got let's just correct that spelling you got an a when marks are 100 you you got a perfect score when marks are zero you failed when marks are 70 you got a b and else if none, none nothing none of these uh, values here from 0 70 190 are entered print enter a correct value it's not the the most accurate program but it, it was just using it to explain how everything works uh, so that's basically it for this video if you have any questions just let me know in the q a section of the course and goodbye